Class is in session. <laughs> Hi everybody, this is Ted, the Buffalo Beauty Boy, and I have a bit of a new possible series that I want to share on my channel, and I think I'm going to call it Beauty School. Um, we are going to talk about a product that has reached superstar status. This iconic cult product is blowing up TikTok, blowing up Instagram. It is all over the beauty sphere. And that product is what I'm wearing on my lips today. It is Clinique's Black Honey. And this product is on everybody's lips, literally and figuratively. Um, so I'm gonna swatch it, I'm gonna build it up, and then we'll talk about the history of Black Honey because it's a lot of fun and that's where this beauty school aspect comes in. So I have a very light application on my lips and I'm gonna really swatch it and show you its full capability. So Black Honey is in essence a sheer solid glossy formula. In the bullet, it looks almost black and that's why it's called black honey is because it just looks so rich and sticky and gooey um but on the lips it shears down this is not at all indicative of what it looks like um it has a very soft but bodied formula in that when you put it on it doesn't disappear it's not like a lip balm in that respect but it does really enhance the color of your, uh, it enhances the natural color of your lips and you can build it up to create a full look, but it also softens throughout its wear time. So I find in one or two swipes, I get the look that I want and it softens throughout the day. I don't need to reapply to keep it looking good. It does, I guess, like dissipate throughout its wear time, but if I don't reapply, it doesn't look bad. It's not like one of those lipsticks that you constantly have to reapply. Um, but if you do, it's not something that you need a mirror for. So this is, um, like two swipes over my lips and you can see I have a pretty solid color. Like it looks like I've got a little something on, but it's not like a discernible, like, yes, that is lipstick. Does that make sense? So I'm going to build it up and then we'll talk about my likes and dislikes about it. This is my lips with like a good solid coat on. I wanna say it did like four swipes um, and it really does build up. It's not picking up quite as plummy on camera as it really is on me. Um, but I kind of knew that was gonna happen. So my lips have a lot of purple pigment in them naturally and I prefer pinks um, and yellow tone uh, like yellow toned nudes because it counterbalances the purple that happens naturally in my lips. So a product that is touted as being like a soft berry, I knew was gonna go very wine stain on my lips. And that's not my like everyday go-to, but it is a look that I do enjoy. This covers that base for me. But what drew me to Black Honey was the history behind it. I've got essentially a full page of notes about Black Honey, um, and we're just going to talk about its history, its inception, and why it's become kind of a cult product. So Black Honey was created in 1971 by Carol Phillips, who was a co-founder of Clinique, but she was also an editor for Vogue. And I love that. I think that's just really interesting. I love... Um, that at its root, it's truly a culmination of like fashion and a really like heritage brand like Clinique. When I think of, I don't use a ton of Clinique, but when I think of like skincare, you know, beauty, I, Clinique is definitely up there. So I think it's interesting that it comes from a like beauty counter brand and has reached such a cult status. Now, she, I believe, I believe it's quoted, she said that she wanted to create a black turtleneck for lips that was easy to wear and would work across different skin tones and different lip shades and different styles. So 
hence Black Honey in its inception, was for everybody and it was designed to be an easy go-to. And it was just that. So when it was initially launched, it was launched in a pot. So think of like a, um, the like Laneige lip sleeping mask. Um, it was a goopier formula that you could apply and swipe on and it would give you the color. Um, it was designed initially as a like perfectly calibrated balance of red, yellow, and blue pigments that created a custom look for everybody that wore it. Fast forward to 1989 and the Almost Lipstick formula was launched. That's when it came in a slim bullet formula. And unlike Clinique's heritage, uh, classic jade green plastic packaging, this was like a stark contrast to that because it was so sleek and so slim where the other packaging was a little bit clunky. So I think in general, it just kind of sets itself apart on the Clinique stand. Um, and I just think that's really cool that they decided to go with something so different from what their other packaging is. But a product that has such a cult following absolutely can carry that. Does that make sense? Clinique Black Honey has a massive celebrity following. And in the 90s, it was a really iconic shade worn by the likes of Meg Ryan and Drew Barrymore. And in my opinion, most notably, Liv Tyler. So Liv Tyler and Clinique Black Honey are almost intricately connected. Um, so much so that I think... You can't really talk about Black Honey. Well, you can, but you can't really talk about like Liv Tyler and beauty without mentioning Black Honey and its likeness. So why am I talking about Liv Tyler and Black Honey's, you know, cult status? Because she championed this color. Most notably, she wore it for her character in The Lord of the Rings. And that character to me was just so iconic as a kid. I remember seeing her on the screen and thinking how gorgeous she looked. And then when I got older and got into beauty, I realized that I was not the only person that thought that. Um, I believe the makeup artist used Black Honey because Liv Tyler already wore it a lot and they wanted to create a look that was ethereal and otherworldly, but still on the ground and didn't look like she had a ton of makeup on. So they chose Black Honey for her character in the movie. Now, Fast forward, <laughs> Liv Tyler worked with Givenchy to create a limited edition shade of lipstick called Mood Ring, and she designed it in the likeness of Black Honey. Mood Ring was limited edition, but it was such a big hit with Givenchy that they made it part of their permanent collection. So with Black Honey being sold out everywhere, if you're looking to spend luxury beauty counter prices on a lipstick such as Black Honey, definitely check out Givenchy and it is the shade Noir Revelateur um, from their, I believe it's their, it's, you can look it up. I will link it down below. Um, Givenchy Noir Revelateur is a dupe for Black Honey. I have not tried it because I have Black Honey, but as soon as I can get to a Sephora, I absolutely plan on seeing and swatching it. So yeah, that's the history of Black Honey and how she came to be. An iconic, you know, calibrated for everybody lipstick from the 70s has evolved to this massive product that's everywhere. Um, I wear it every now and again, the only thing that I'll say is it's not necessarily my favorite only because, as I stated, my lips have a lot of purple in them. So anything that is very purpley, whiny, gets very purple on me. And that's just not necessarily my favorite look. So I have a couple other dupes in my collection that I'd like to share with you. And one that has, honestly, the same performance in my opinion, but is more suited to my tastes. So I'm going to wipe this off and then I will show you. I'm also going to have them swatched next to each other. So keep in mind, this is Black Honey. This is Black Honey sheared out. And I'm going to put the other swatches above. 
So I have three dupes for my collection and they're dupes in the sense that they have the same wearability and the same, they're in the same shade of family, um, but maybe a little bit different depending on your tastes. So my first and favorite dupe is the Gucci Wall Sheer Lipstick in the shade Marguerite Jade. And I wear this all the time. It's very brown toned, which I prefer. So that's Margaret Jade and this is Black Honey. You can see it's just a little bit more brownie and less berry. I wear this constantly. This is my favorite go-to every day. The way that people talk about Black Honey is the way that I feel about this. So I'm gonna put this on and I'll show you what it looks like. So that's a super, you know, a healthy coat of the Gucci Voile. And this to me is my lips. This is what I feel comfortable wearing. Super comfortable. I would say formulaically, they're very similar. And you can even tell just kind of by the bullets. So again, they both look very deep in the bullet, but they sheer out. They both have that like solidified gloss look and feel. Super comfortable on the lips, both very moisturizing. I just find that the shade Margaret Jade is a little bit easier on my skin tone to wear because it doesn't go quite as purpley. Now, the next shade that I'm going to share that I think is a wonderful dupe for Clinique Black Honey, and it's the, mm, I don't know if it's the most affordable, but it's infinitely more affordable than uh, Gucci or even the Givenchy one, is the Undone Beauty Light on the Lip lipstick in the shade Gosh Garnet. Now, this is more of a full-bodied lipstick as opposed to the other two that are that sheer kind of formula, um, and you can tell just by the bullet. However, on the lips, I think it looks similar enough and it feels very hydrating, very light, easy to wear. This, I would say, is a little bit more opaque in formula, but in application, it does soften down. There is a noticeable shimmer in it, which I don't mind personally. And that's the swatch. So where Black Honey is a little bit more ruddy and berry toned. This is a little bit more like bright and a little bit more pink and rounded, but I think on the lip, they're pretty indiscernible. This is the Undone Beauty in the shade Gosh Garnet. And on the lip, they both have that wash of color. This one is definitely a little bit more substantial feeling. It feels like there's more product on the lip. And I think that comes from the glitter that's actually in it. But up close, you can kind of see that there's a bit of a shimmer, but there's no chunkiness or really discernible glitter. And that's why I think this is a pretty solid dupe, especially because it's a little bit more affordable and probably a little bit easier to get your hands on. Now, the last product that I want to share is another affordable option. And it's one that I think is, you know... <sighs> The most, it deviates the most from the actual formula, but in terms of performance and shade, I think you can make it work. It's also kind of another cult product, and it is the Revlon Super Lustrous Lipstick in the shade Toast of New York. Now, Toast of New York was also an iconic shade in the 90s, and in the bullet, you can see it's a bricky, brown-toned, almost red, now it is the most solid, it's the most opaque, and it really is like a true lipstick formula. When sheared out, I think it looks really similar. So I'm gonna apply this and I'm just gonna dot it on my lips and kind of rub them together as opposed to actually like swiping it because I do wanna keep this pretty sheer. This is Toast of New York on my lips. I can't say it's the most similar in terms of performance and in terms of um, shade even, but it has a similar cult following. You can look up Toast of New York and it has been around for a very long time. It's been a bestseller of Revlon for forever and it was another iconic shade worn in the 90s. So I think if you're really, you know, in a pinch for black honey, 
you can make this work and you get a similar look and feel with the same kind of ambiance as Black Honey, where the other two, I think, are a little bit different in terms of, like, vibe that they give off. Does that make sense? But all of them could work really similarly. And you can tell just by the swatches on my hand. They're all in the same, like, family. They could all easily be sisters. Um, so while Clinique Black Honey is an absolute icon and definitely a staple in so many makeup bags across the world, it's not my favorite. Um, I own it. I don't plan on, like, getting rid of it. I can't really speak bad about it, but I definitely have other things that I like, if not just as much, a little bit more. And there's definitely options that are more affordable or options that are even a little bit more expensive, but absolutely more tailored to my specific preferences. All of this is to say that while Black Honey is going viral, it's a wonderful product, but there's absolutely other things out there. And I'm sure if you shopped your stash, you could find something that would absolutely work. So um, let me know if you liked this kind of you know, format for the video, if you liked me talking about the history of a product that really is kind of a cult staple. Um, let me know if you've tried Black Honey and if you have any other dupes. So I think um, the change in the lighting and me starting to lose my voice a little bit is a sign that we're coming to the close of the video. So I hope that you liked this. I hope this was kind of fun and a little bit different from my typical like video style. Um, if you liked learning about the history of this product, please let me know. I had a ton of fun researching and I would really love to create more videos like this. Um, I have a few like cult classics that are in my beauty collection that I would love to share with you. So let me know if you thought this was cool. Um, while these aren't exact dupes, these are things that I shopped my stash for that gave me the same kind of vibe as Clinique Black Honey. And some of them are less expensive and some of them I like even more than Black Honey. So I guess like when you're scrolling and searching, it's really easy to get caught up in I need this one specific item to make me feel like Liv Tyler in Empire Records. But that's not always the case. Um, I guess if anything, take a look at things that you've got. And also remember that just because it, everybody loves it, it might not be for you. It might not be your favorite. I hope that you're all doing well. I hope that you're being kind to yourself. And more importantly, I hope you remember that wherever you are, whatever you're going through, you're made of gold. So until next time.